All right, so let's take a look at a couple more algebraic equations for us to solve, starting with this quadratic equation. 5x squared minus 3x plus 4 equals 0. So let's go through our progression and make sure we are solving this the most efficient way possible. First, you would try to see if you can use the square root property, but the answer here is no, because you have x squared and x, so you have too many variable terms to use the square root property. The next thing you would try is to factor and use the zero factor theorem. If I do a quick check of this using the AC method, that's five times four, which gives me 20. And can you find factors of 20 that add to three? And you see that you can't. Now there's no way to break down 20 so that you can get three. So factoring is not good. Well, what about completing the square? Well, completing the square wants you to have a lead coefficient of one. We don't have that, but we can get it. We would have to divide everything here by five. That gives us fractions. Now, we don't really want to do completing the square with fractions. We can, but there's an easier way to do that. So since completing the square isn't going to work out nicely, then we land at the quadratic formula. Okay, so remember the quadratic formula is x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac. All of this is divided by 2. A. So make sure that you correctly identify your a, b, and c. So here, a is 5, b is negative 3, and c is 4. All right, so let's plug that into the formula and see what we get. So x is equal to negative b, and well, b is negative 3, so negative negative 3 is positive 3, plus or minus the square root of b squared, whether it's positive or negative, your b squared is going to be positive. So you square the negative three, you get positive nine. Minus four ac. Now I like to take this guy off to the side and work that out. So that's negative four times a five times c, which is four. So five times four is 20. 20 times negative four is negative 80. So I'm gonna put that inside the radical like that. All divided by 2a. a is 5, so 2 times a is 10. And now we just need to clean this up. So this is 3 plus or minus the square root of negative 71 all divided by 10. The only thing that we can do here to further simplify this is to see the negative factor inside the radical which means we get to simplify an imaginary unit out in front. So it's I and then 71. 71 is prime. So we can't do anything with that. So he stays inside the radical of 71. And this is all over 10. It is not the prettiest of solutions, but it is the solution to this equation. All right. Well, let's do one more. Ah, here we only have x in one spot, so how bad can it be? You've got this power here, which is a fraction, so it typically means we're going to be using the power property. But before I can do that, I need to get this expression by itself. So I'm first going to subtract 23 on both sides. All right, so that's 8x plus 5. That quantity raised to the 3 fourths power is equal to 27. Now to undo this radical, we got to use the power property. So it means you need to raise each side to a power that is the reciprocal of this. So the reciprocal of 3 over 4 is 4 over 3. And do that over here on the right side as well. When you do a power to a power, you end up multiplying those powers. And since this is a fraction times its reciprocal, when you multiply those, you get 1. So on the left side, we just have 8x plus 5. On the right side, we need to remember this. That when you have an expression raised to a fractional power like x or like m over n, that means that you are going to do the nth root of x and then raise to the n power. That means this expression becomes 
the cube root of 27 raised to the fourth. The denominator of your power becomes the index of your radical. And so before we start getting x by itself, we need to go ahead and simplify what's on the right side. The cube root of 27 is 3. So that's 3 to the 4th. Keep on working this out. 3 to the 4th power is 81. Four factors of 3. And now you have a nice linear equation. So you know what to do. Subtract 5 on both sides. That gives us 76. Divide both sides by 8. Now, 8 does not go into 76 evenly, but we can reduce this. Again, you can take this off to the side to see what's going to happen here. 76 divided by 8. Uh, you can at least reduce these guys by a factor of 2 because they're both even. That gives us 38 over 4. And... We can reduce these guys again by another common factor of 2. And that gives us 19 over 2. So if you didn't see that 4 was the greatest common factor, do it one piece at a time. And reduce to get 19 halves. So with each algebraic equation you come across, you need to identify what you have going on and how to get rid of it. When you have something that's quadratic like the first one, think about those quadratic methods that we have. See if you can factor it or complete the square. If you can't do any of that good stuff, quadratic formula. For this other problem that we had, we had a power that we had to get rid of. So we had to use the power property once we isolated that part of the equation. And then you just simplify and solve what you have left.